Hey everybody, so today we are going to be talking about what is data as a product in 10 minutes or less. And if you missed it, last week we talked about data products and this is a little bit different, but that video is up above if you are interested in that. So what is data as a product? So it is taking data that you have curated and you have created uh, and you are selling it as a product. And there are some lessons to be learned here if you've never done this. Um, learn these lessons now before you learn them the hard way. And that is, you need to be prepared. This is a product. People are going to have expectations as to its availability, its quality, its uptimes and downtimes and its latency and do you have customer service? How does someone get errors corrected? So even though you say your data set is a certain quality, there's always going to be something in the data that is incorrect or just a little wonky and you are on the hook to correct those things. So you have to be aware if you're doing data as a product that those things need to be in place. And if you are someone looking to purchase data as a product, this is something you want to check that uh, the, the folks that you're going to be purchasing from are, are addressing. So you'll see a lot of data as a product on marketplaces nowadays. And these have been on marketplaces for a while now. And some common use cases in the past were, you know, maybe somebody had a data as a product of a taxonomy. It was a base taxonomy for a certain thing. Um, and you could use that and then build more of your taxonomy off of it. Uh, there's other things where there's uh, ontologies that you could purchase or knowledge graphs that were data as a service. Um, those have existed for a while. Um, now with LLMs, there's a lot of people that are generating and, and creating data sets for selling into the LLM market. But again, you want to be aware if you were doing data as a product, you want to have things in your contracts that very specifically say whether someone can use your data in an LLM because once your data goes into that LLM, it ain't not coming back. So you want to be sure that you are addressing that in your service agreements. The other thing you want to be cautious of is uh, how did you create that data. You need to have certain guarantees that it doesn't have any sensitive topics. That could be sensitive in a way of um, topics that are highly debated, um, or it could also be personal information that is legally prohibited to be in data sets. So you really need to make sure that your data is, is complying with the laws and the regulations for these sort of things. You also wanna make sure that you have quality standards and that you are very transparent about what those quality standards are. So I've seen other data sets say, oh, well, you know, our stuff is this much quality. It only you know, has this many errors. According to who? And, and what quality measures are you using? How often do you run that? Like I said, who is doing that actual assessment? Because if it's just random uh, survey takers on Mechanical Turk, that's not maybe as uh, impressive as you know, subject matter experts in a certain topic. You really do want to be careful about the balance of things in your data set because again, biases can be introduced depending on what stuff you used or or where you were or you know the the people set that might uh have been a contributing factor to the data set that, that you have but you also want to make sure that when you're doing this you have the composition of your data set uh as as part of your product offering because then you have all that sensitivity you have the the standard uptimes downtimes latency all of those things um, you want to be very clear on um, how many named entities versus something different versus um, attributes or maybe um, transactional um, data that might be synthetic. Again, you want to flag if something is synthetic or not. Uh, you definitely do not want to be selling um, customer information. That is also illegal, so do not do that. 
um, unless a customer base for some reason signed off on it. Other factors is what happens when you start to add your own modifications or your own data into to supplement that data as a product. So you really want to be aware of breaking changes. So there's a number of ways that you can offer up data as a product. So you can have it as an API where that API call goes directly into the data, you grab whatever it is that you're querying and it spits it back out. There is data dumps where you maybe purchase a one-time data dump and you get this large file and that's what you get. You get a, a data dump, it's a download file and that's what you get. You can do a subscription where it might be an API, it might be a data dump and you get an updated version, you know, every so many months or every so many years. When those updates happen, you can create breaking changes because the customer could have all kinds of stuff now connected to that original data set that are now being broken. So you need to be very aware and cautious when you're doing that and be very transparent and open with your customers. And if a customer is making their own modifications, so a good example with um, the knowledge graphs as a product, as a data product, if you are adding your own information into that knowledge graph, you really, as the customer, want to know your data is protected, that your data isn't then just getting dumped into the data product that everyone else uses, because guess what? Your competitors could be using it as well. So you really want to understand how these things are addressed. And a third option here, and a lot of folks are, are thinking of, about this now because of the LLM situation, where they are just so freaked out <laughs> that the LLM is gonna take all their data um, or their customer is just gonna dump it in uh, what they are doing is they are adding a service on top of their data. So if you are offering a disambiguation service, for instance, the data is there and then the service to, to do the disambiguation, the algorithms are sitting on top of it. And that is the API that your customer is, is querying. So they're not actually getting access to the data directly. They have to go through the uh, gate gatekeeping basically and only get data that answers the question that they're looking for so they never get access to the full data set which kind of helps protect it from llms and, and other things that they shouldn't be doing with it all right so in closing remarks some areas that you can use data as a product i already mentioned entity resolution um, some other areas would be, uh, you know, you could sell it to train LLMs, but again, go into that really understanding what you're doing and what your, <laughs> what your business model is and, and what the risks and benefits are. Um, another one is selling historic data. So if you have gone through and with time and money and resources gathered all of this historical data on something that's actually really valuable because that's trends, those are themes. So as an example, um, if you have data on um, how certain farming equipment, uh, mechanical farming equipment has broken down over the past 30 years, you can you can sell that as a data data as a product and that helps people learn how to maintain equipment better and train on what are the warning signs before something breaks and that potentially can make things more reliable. And those are more like IoT kinds of uh, examples. You can use um, information from archives uh, where it's handwritten information. That stuff is so hard to digitize. Um, if you have a collection of things that are really unique to history or economics or law or something like that, um, and you have transcribed all of it, that's data as a product. And that would be very valuable context um, for research. Honestly, it doesn't even have to be a machine learning uh, situation with that. Another one that I'm always advocating for is data sets that are specific to certain cultures, certain geographic regions, certain languages that are not prevalent. And the reason I advocate for that is because that is how you can actually preserve a lot of cultural history or um, language, honestly, um, that is, is kind of falling by the wayside. So you don't necessarily have to sell that. Again, that could be one of the open types of data as a product. It's being supported as if it's a product, but it's really for the betterment of some of those those people groups being better represented in whatever that data as a product is being used for, or again, it's just the historical significance and the preservation. Um, so these are just a few examples of data as a product. Um, oftentimes it's something that people use as a stepping stone. Those are great examples as why these 
um, might be useful to you and how maybe you can get involved as data as a product as another revenue source. Again, I cannot stress enough, do this ethically and responsibly. <laughs> Do not do not do anything and that's that's untoward and get up to shenanigans. Um, but overall, this is maybe a promising area that you maybe hadn't thought about before. And hopefully this video has shed some light on that for you. So with that, I want to thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.